What's going on, guys? It's Frito here for your Overwatch brand new experimental card. Just went up on the Overwatch client. Testing out changes to three outlier heroes with the overall theme of reducing the damage in the game. The devs are reducing both her try shot ammo and the duration of her focusing beam, saying specifically that she was performing too well up against high health pool targets, but this shouldn't deal with her burst up against squishies. Now, I was fairly surprised not to see a range or overall damage reduction to focusing beam, just a duration. And with try shots ammo being reduced by three shots, you will find that you'll need to reload and your overall pressure damage over the course of an entire team fight, especially onto tanks, is going to be lower. My problem with these changes is that I think this nerfs medium and lower tier echo players disproportionately to higher tier ones. Because the truth about focusing beam, you really only need it for the last bit of damage. And if you watch some high level echo players like Rascal in the Overwatch League, I thought was amazing, playing for SF Shock kind of taught everyone how to play echo. He only pulled out focusing beam during the optimal situations when a target was half health, and then he even canceled it in order for for it to go on cooldown faster. That's a very interesting detail. So what I'm saying is he intentionally animation canceled in order to get the next cooldown of focusing beam faster. So this type of nerf to its duration almost has the Fara effect where they intentionally reduce the duration of barrage to lower its commitment time. Focusing beam is similar where you actually don't want to keep it out if it's not at its ideal peak damage. You would rather only use it when it's going to be dealing that 200 damage per second when a target is at half health. So that's a bit of a problem that may unintentionally buff some echo players that weren't canceling it properly it'll come down faster for them. But a benefit to this is that up against a target like Reinhardt, that half a second will matter because it used to be that you could get a shield to half, burn it down with two and a half seconds of focusing beam, and then maybe your team helps get him in that 50% health threshold as well, and a big percentage of that focusing beam could just lay onto a Reinhardt for an extended period of time. Not to mention Echo's ultimate already punishes him from being a pick anyway, but I think that's the thought process of reducing its overall duration, how long you can just lay it into a tank, chew through their barrier, and then their health while still maintaining it. My problem is, at the two second mark, I think it still does all of those things. You'll just have to be a bit more efficient with it, but I don't think you needed the full two and a half seconds anyway. I think most of the time it was overkill and you could have one second of it and still do the job. Now, perhaps those thresholds will feel different with the Zenyatta nerfs that we'll get to, but those are just some early concerns about this nerf. I think it somewhat misses the point in a few areas and also will nerf her harder for players that are playing her inefficiently, which maybe is a good thing, but doesn't necessarily attack the higher level meta where she's more oppressive. With some of her damage being less forgiving, you'll be punished more for whiffing more with more down time, but I'm not sure if I find that to be too significant. And in some ways, Echo might be getting contextually better with one of her better predators being nerfed as well. Tracer, if you recall, in the power-up era of Overwatch, got a Soldier 76-esque range buff that significantly improved her damage fall off at medium and even a bit longer ranges. Now that has been reined in a bit. In the early days of Overwatch, it was a very sharp cutoff, where if you weren't in close range, she just did nothing. Think of it more akin to how D.Va's damage feels at range, like it's useless. You might as well not even shoot. Well, now the Pulse Pistol's minimum and maximum damage range has been adjusted. So the way this works is, it used to be if you were inside of 13 meters, you would do full damage. That's been reined in an entire meter. So to do full damage, you have to be a meter closer to the target. But also I would assume that because they're squeezing in the range from both sides, it's going to be a sharper decline than it was before, where you used to be able to deal damage 23 meters away before you lost all of the damage completely. Now that's pulled even closer again to be only 20 meters away. So before you had 10 meters of range to work with where your damage was falling off, now it's only eight, right? Between those two points. This is all incredibly important because the distance control Tracer has to keep on targets is such a big deal. There was a long era of Overwatch's life that she needed to just be too close to all the stuns in the game in order to play that she was absolutely useless. So they buffed up her range so that she could play farther offset 
with better spacing against those things but with the lower healing amounts and lower defenses she was definitely starting to push forward as being a dominant pick her ability to fight a character like farah or echo or someone that can fly and control their distance weakens her power in that matchup another one to consider is against mccree who had his health buffed and now tracer's range is lower and it's always hard to really quantify this in a preview to the patch type video but you got to think of the positions tracer goes from being effective in to ineffective and we've been spoiled with a very powerful tracer for quite a while and i think you're going to be surprised how much a range change like this matters because the best way to think of it is that it is a damage nerf now you'll have to be closer to do the same damage, which makes you an easier target to hit. So Tracer just got significantly harder to play and perhaps just flat out weaker in some cases. So we want to try to think about the types of medium range engagements Tracer could take on something that had a very squarish hitbox that led to her having maybe a bit of an overpowered interaction with it. So I think to characters like Winston, which Tracer can easily space off of, in the launch days of Overwatch, she could barely tickle him outside of his range but when she got a range buff she could always stay right outside of his damage circling around him and just peppering him down making him kind of useless but with her range reined in a bit she might not be able to control that matchup before a dive happens as easily as before other characters you can think of as like backliners bap zenyatta brig and the closer tracer has to come to brig in order to be effective the more the balls in her court to make that play because if before tracer felt that she could play at an off angle and do a effective damage let's say that damage is dropped significantly now well maybe the aura healing of inspire or some negligible bap healing is enough to make her damage unimpactful that's how she felt before she got the ranged buff where the only positions that were safe didn't really get you any value that's the trend she's going in that direction and to be honest as i said in my tier list video until you're at a really high rank i feel the supports still dictate that matchup quite a bit when bap can instantly lamp her pulse bomb is a good fighter in his own right with his damage buffs and briggs heal is nuts enough that as long as she avoids the tracer the thing she's supporting is going to have a big leg up in the battle fending her off and then of course rally just undoes all of her damage pretty much so i think that relationship gets a bit more severe again and also as well both of these characters and all flankers for that matter get a indirect nerf thanks to these zenyatta nerfs so they do two major nerfs with this where the projectile speed of the orbs both harmony and discord for either healing or damage amplification have gotten 25 percent slower that nerf alone is quite significant because your responsiveness in this kit is a huge percentage of its value because it's already easy to target right it's not like having to have perfect line of sight with anna to hit a shot on a teammate it's rather forgiving when with how it allows you to cast your ability to quickly change orbs to who needs it to save them that goes down but also the responsiveness that bursts a thing that's coming in on you also goes down so perhaps on accident this zen nerf might be a significant buff to characters like wrecking ball and doomfist where the time it takes to deploy that discord is perhaps hundreds of damage from the team right because think about it if it takes you a fraction longer to cast discord it's not amplifying all of that early damage from the team so this means Wrecking Ball's lifespan is going to be a bit longer going up against Zen, where right now on the live version of the game, it kind of feels like most tanks Zen can parry back discord it instantly and have the whole team focus it easily he's the king of the meta as far as i'm concerned if you watch the tier list video just slowing that down alone already opens up a gap for these characters to move in and maybe they focus the target rushing in before you punish them for rushing now on top of that they also reduce the damage amplification back down to 25 percent so this is the type of change that i advocated for originally because it was closer to what zen was back in the day in my opinion, Zen as a solo hero needs to really pay off with the risk reward for him to be pickable. It's very easy for Zenyatta's stats to not be good enough to just be in the discard bin and almost a throw pick. A lot of times in Overwatch, that was the case. So I like the 30% value, but what I don't like is when there's so many easy ways to protect him. They definitely can't have the 30% mark and also buff BAP to an unreasonable degree. That's kind of the tricky thing. 
And something I wish they would consider is the holistic impact of different changes. It's hard for me to say that this 5% discord damage will lower his dueling too much. It's a few points of damage here or there. So against squishies in a 1v1, perhaps insignificant, but definitely the team damage up against tanks, that's going to be significant. But there is one matchup that these nerfs will matter for his dueling, and that is his long range five orb plus discord combo, which is kind of difficult to pull off, but it's a bit of Zenyatta tech, where if you're at long enough range, it's possible to shoot a volley and then cast the discord out in front of it so it reaches the target as the orbs land. A little bit complicated for that to work out, but you'll see the high level Zenyatta players try to do this. And well, if the projectile speed of the discord is lower, that means this will be a harder thing to pull off. So Zenyatta's ability to snipe with that damage amp anyway, has gone down. Over the years, his base orb damage had already been increased. So he doesn't necessarily need it to win duels if he hits headshots, but his ability to rapidly put the discord out in front of his volley in a duel will lower his sniping a bit. And the thing that sucks is now Zen has to be nerfed for the sins of these other playstyles that were buffed that nobody asked for. How many times have I said that sentence over the years? That fun and fair heroes have to die at the altar of something that's obnoxious and broken was intended to be forced into the metagame. This is sort of an issue with Overwatch just like philosophically that because you can easily swap to any hero, you always have the protection of swapping to something that is going to boost the performance of something else. You're never limited in the team comp you can build. So because of that, the meta is far more boom or bust than it is in other games that have different play formats. But that's a conversation for many other videos. This is the strategy they're going for Overwatch 1. So as we've been, all we get to do is just strap into the roller coaster and ride it up and down wherever Papa Jeff decides to take us. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.